Carnival comes to Mona in Trinidad style. Foot of fire rocket splitting the silence. Sleep banished from eyes already alert. Pajamas hastily camouflaged and old mass costumes donned. Through the darkness, the irresistible rhythm of the steel band began casting its spell of Circe-like magnetism over the campus. Unable to resist the lure of pulsating drum beats, many would-be spectators soon found themselves winding down the road in gay abandon. Union Chairman James Williams, with a flourish, declared, Juve! and carnival was on. Daylight showed how rashly clad undergraduates had left their halls. Sleeping beauties with curlers in place fended off the attentions of Prince Charming's and bold offers to waken with a kiss. Demure Chinese maidens, long silken plaits swinging, smiled coyly from beneath coolie hats. One character in questionable attire gave the male population a scare by presenting the preconceived notion that it could happen to them. Special applause came for the winning pair and the realistic effect of nose rings, banana strip skirts and the rest of their aboriginal regalia. It was obvious that the chairman's look funny injunction had been taken to heart. After lunch and the opening of Black Sea Boulevard, it was carnival continue. Despite the sun, it was bacchanal as the road march advanced upon College Common to bring a taste of regradement and West Indian culture to the cool detachment of the college staff. Meanwhile, at the Union, free rum punch kept the crowd in high spirits awaiting the arrival of the marchers. Looking not the worse for wear, the motley crew, representing all classes of society, convicts and lovers of peace, to the more Martinique lady, soon arrived. The judging of costumes was handicapped by a microphone which took fright and refused to work. Despite the frantic appeals of the MC who kept clinging to it hopefully, it was a tremendous and colorful show. Spectators were intrigued by a certain demure, lipsticked mist of doubtful origin and applauded her efforts to tangle with the judge who announced her name on the winning list. Among the genuine and guaranteed males, Mr. Martin was a natural. It did not need his hall as a whole to placard to announce his identity and so realistic was he that undergraduates begged for a speech and got it. Most interesting among the entries was the group event which must have given the judges a headache. The Stone Age folk with a caveman costume and behavior was a popular choice, while among the most original was the portrayal of the well-known Fire Brigade Calypso, complete with bell, siren, burning house, and water. Final event was the choosing of the Carnival Queen on a basis of beauty, figure, and charm. Contestants were slow in coming forward and nearly all displayed distinct reluctance to remain in the arena longer than necessary. Union Chairman Williams, following his declared peace and love policy, was present to assist the girls in showing their assets to best advantage. Latecomer Miss Padma Dial walked away with the prize and the first inscription on the Carnival Queen Cup presented for the first time. The steel band marched undergraduates up the hill and later marched them down again.
undergraduates were probably too tired to participate in another disguise competition, but Miss Chinese Jamaica 1957 would have hoodwinked any but the most wide awake of judges. The union was crowded, but the undergraduates and visitors catching the prevailing Trinidadian carnival spirit enjoyed themselves. The steel band must be congratulated for its magnificent performance throughout the day.